So we're starting to build out our Angular application. And in this lesson, we're going to continue to do that by building out our task list component. Now, we need a list of tasks created in this component that we can then send down to our template and display in our list of tasks. So for right now, we're going to do this manually. But we'll come back in the following lesson and wire up our service to connect to our Spring Boot application to handle this for us. So the first thing we'll need is a list of tasks. And you might think of this as, say, an object. Say we had an object that was an ID, a name, which was a string, completed, which was a Boolean. We would usually have like an array of those, and we can initialize those to an empty array. So this would kind of work, but the nice thing about this is we're using TypeScript. So in TypeScript, we get the idea of types. And so we would want an array of tasks, right? So I think that's what we'd want. But we don't have anything that is um, an object of task to kind of set us up for that. So the first thing we're going to do is come in here and create a new file. We're going to call this task.model, oops, model.ts. And again, this is going to represent our class, our task. So we're going to say export class task. And this is going to have an ID number. This is going to have a name, which is of type string. This is going to have a completed of Boolean. And finally, this is going to have a due date. And just to keep it simple, we'll keep this as a string. So we're going to have a constructor here. And this is going to take all of these variables. So for right now, it's going to take all of them. When we get into Spring Boot, right, we had that at generated value on our ID. So that's going to get generated by the database. So when we hook that up to Spring Boot, we won't actually need to supply an ID. But for right now, we'll go ahead and do so. So we have an ID. We have name, which is string completed a boolean and finally due date which is of type string and then this dot id id okay so that looks about right Hey, let's check this out. Unused. So we have an ID, name, completed, and due date. Okay, that looks about right, but I'm getting an error here. What's going on? So this dot completed is equal to completed. Hmm, what is going on here? Oh, I'm sorry. So nothing's wrong with our model. We're back to here. OK, so now that we have a model that represents our task, we're coming back to our task list component. This is probably just complaining because it doesn't know what task is. So let's go ahead and import that. Did we import that yet? No. Let's just start this. Task is equal to task array okay so that should give us what we need so now we have initialized an array of tasks and the first thing that we need to do is I want to go ahead and set some tasks up so I can easily do this by just adding some manually so I'm going to say this dot tasks dot push and we're basically going to create a new task so this is going to take an ID. This is going to take a name. So we'll call this task one. Completed, we'll say true. And due date is a string. We'll say 7, 8, 17. OK, so that's that. Let's just create two more. We'll say 2, 3, 3, 2. And we'll say one of these false. false. Okay, so now we have three tasks. 
And everything looks pretty good here from our task list component. Now what we need to do is wire up our template so that it can take these components or take these different tasks. So what we want to do is head over to our template and we're going to modify this a little, right? So we don't need these. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. And that's still going to have that class. But now we're going to add in our ng4 directive so that we can loop over our tasks. So we say let task of tasks and that should give us a loop over those. Now what we want to do is div dot task checkbox. Okay, so now we're going to have a checkbox for each of those as well. And so inside of there, again, this is just some kind of markup on the bootstrap side of things. So we're going to have a type checkbox class, we'll say list child. Then we're going to have a change detector. So anytime something changes, we're going to call a method. We're going to say on task change. That's going to pass our event and our task. And we're also going to have a checked property binding task.completed. Okay, so I think that's going to work. And then we just need two more things here. So we're going to have a, let me just copy these in here, save a little time. So let's walk through this. So we have unordered list of type list group. Again, this is bootstrap stuff. For each element, for each li, we're going to loop over all the tasks that we get. And what we're going to do inside of there, we're going to have an input. That input is so that we can either check it or not. And what it's going to do is on change, we're going to call on a method that we haven't written yet. And it's also going to have property binding here to say, is this checkbox checked or not? And that is going to be determined on whether this task is completed or not. Next, we're going to have a class. We just have a class over the name, basically if it's completed or not. And we're going to have the task.name outputted here. And then we're also going to have a little label that displays the due date. So we have a class for that as well. So that should do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at our app and see if anything's changed. So we have task one. Something is not displaying correctly. Let task of tasks. So new task. All right. Let me just inspect. Okay, I forgot, we didn't write these methods yet. So we actually need two methods in here. And the first one is to, let me just copy these in here as well. So we wrote those couple of things. Let's go back and just look at this real quick. So get due date label. So if we jump back to our list here, we have this get due date label. And this is just a method. So this is calling a function in our component. I mean, it needs to figure out what class it's going to give to it, if you will. So that's that part. And then we also have that change detection. So on task change, we're going to do something. So this on task change is actually not going to do anything right now. We're going to get into that when we start talking about adding and saving particular tasks. So for right now, I'm just going to say task has so that should work now. Let's go ahead and open up. And there we go. So now we can check these, but nothing's going to happen because we're just going to call that task change method that just prints out to the console right now. So, so far, so good. Everything looks to be working. Now, what we need to do is kind of change this out. We need to create a service and get rid of this static data and actually use our service to call to our Spring Boot application and get the actual list of tasks. So in the next lesson, we're going to do just that.